that only your will will be established in the lives of your people. Are we tired of saying amen? In the course of this service, Almighty Father, break yokes. Let bondages be destroyed. Anything that escaped the arrow of our prayers this past eight months, Lord, this Sunday, let them not escape it again. Someone is at the verge of destiny decision. May God decide for you. Lord, as you take us through your word, glorify yourself, edify your son, and let Satan be horrified. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I said in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout that amen at the top of your voice. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 14. Where is Biola? Grab a microphone and read it for me in the New King James Version of the Bible. Since we don't have um, the something set up, but very soon everything will be working perfectly well in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 14 from the NKJV. Please bear with us. God bless you. I forgot to let us know that the Awobo Tools will be having a Thanksgiving after service. Amen. Just a short one. We just want to thank God with them. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Go on, please. Now, thanks be to God. Yes. Who always leads us mm -hmm. in triumph mm -hmm. in Christ. Yes. And through us, mm -hmm. diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge. And through us, it diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge yes in every place in every place god bless you please take your seat amalgamate your hands together and give god the glory god bless you amen throughout this month is a month of joy comet and throughout this month our messages will be directed and connected with joy and so today we'll start the series on what i've titled the joy of victory the joy of victory let me start by establishing i promise not to spend too much time but i have told you that we can't finish 1 30 today is that okay uh -huh. i know when you are cursing me in your mind is that okay is that okay church ah <laughs> Amen. Let me start by saying, please, that you don't thank people for what is not completed. You only thank someone for what has been done. If I give Kalisha a thousand pounds, if I promise her a thousand pounds, out of civility, she will tell me thank you. But if she receives a thousand pound physically from me, her gratitude will be different from when I promised it. Is that correct? So, Bible here tells us, now thanks be to God who will give us victory. Is that what he said? Okay, let us rise up and share the grace. Since you have gone home, I'm serious. So I will close. We have tried. I mean, if we close service now, God is not upset, and Pastor is not upset either. So, are we in church? Are we in church? So, Second Corinthians two fourteen, Bible says, and thanks be to God, who says He will give to us, who is going to cause us to triumph, who promised us that we will triumph? No. Who caused us to triumph? So, he has given you that victory. He's not promised to give it to you. The victory has already been given. In Romans chapter 8 verse number 37. Nay, in all of these things... We are more than what? We are more than what? 
No, sir, come. I promise I won't take your time. So, this is Satan. I am Jesus. Amen? I'm only demonstrating. Even one of the ministers opened his mouth so agape that housefly will have entered. Because I said, this is Satan. Does it look like Satan? Have you heard of the word allegory before? Abba. Figures of speech? Ah. And, ah. Thank God no fly was flying. We have settled there very well. So, before Jesus went to Calvary, this is Satan. This is Jesus. He looked big. Oh yeah, we are boxing. Oh yeah, let us. I want to demonstrate to you what more than conquer of me. Don't be afraid to hit me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we are boxing. You need to be throwing jabs. <laughs> oh yeah, in my face. In my face. Aha. So as he throws the sit down, no sir, God bless you. As he throws the jab, because it looks bigger. So I ended up with bruises, with wounds, with cuts, with blood. But at the end of the day, where is Zoe's uh, trophy? I told her I was going to need it. God is wonderful. You see what I'm doing? I didn't know I was going to do it. You know at the end of every competition, you are given a trophy. That is what proves that you are triumphant. Are we still here? Please stay with me. So, though Satan battered me, bruised me, maybe busted me, wounded me, but at the end of the day, I won the contest. So, I received the trophy. Biola, play my wife today. Come. You are beautiful, but my wife is more beautiful. Oh, is she there? Okay, she's not. You play my wife. We are, what do you call it? Is it play, role play? Aha. Thank you. So, this is madam. So, who fought? Huh? I'm ex- I want to explain to you what more than conquer or me. So, who fought? Me. Me. Uh-huh. Who collected the trophy? Who was battered? Who has his lips busted? Who has blood flowing? But this is madam. So I get home. And then with this trophy comes a check of 10 million pounds. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I now come home because as the madam that I love. So both the check and the trophy, I gave it to her. As she, did, did she fight? Was she wounded? Was she battered? But the money and the trophy, who collect, who receive the final aid? So this is the conqueror. This is more than conqueror. Hallelujah. Are we together? I conquered, but she didn't do anything, and she collected everything. So she's more than me. So Jesus, who fought it, we are the one that is called the more than conqueror. So because everything that Jesus took from Satan, he gave it. To us, are we together? And that is why I know you are undefeatable. Satan can defeat you, situation can defeat you. Why? Because you are more than a you are more than a shout yes, shout yes, shout yes. So that is how God leads us to triumph. Even when you have not lifted a fist to fight. And yet the trophy has been given. Now, thanks be to God. Who caused us to triumph always. Are we still here? Are we still here? So, did you fight? No. No. But are you a conqueror more?
than a conqueror. I prophesy again. Anything that looks like defeat. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They are finally out of your life. Please sit down ministers. Do you know. That the description of what we read in 2 Corinthians 2.14. Is actually a description of the gospel. What does gospel mean? Gospel means good news. In Greek, it is the word evangelion. Are we still here? That is the Greek meaning of the gospel. So the gospel is not happening now. The gospel has happened before. The battle has been fought before and you are now taking the victory. That is the meaning of evangelion. Something that was done in the past. So your healing isn't now you were healed before. Your prosperity isn't now you have been prospered or you've been prosperous before. You are not being promoted now. You have been promoted before. I decree it again under God. I say whatever it is that doesn't return glory to God. By the beauty of the gospel. I see it being reflected in your life. I see it being reflected in your life. Evangelion. In the Roman Empire, they have been reading a lot of books on the Roman Empire. The way it works in their time is that an emperor rarely goes to war. So there is always a warlord who goes to battle on behalf of the king. Are we still here? So when this king goes to battle, please stay with me. I'm explaining to you what Evangelion means or means. So when this warlord goes to battle, the Roman king is waiting in anticipation. Did they win? Did they lose? Because if they lose, the head of that king will end up in a charger. That is the Roman, that is the culture in those days. So this king is standing in apprehension and anticipation. So this warlord goes to battle on behalf of his king and fights. And then he wins the battle. But this warlord becomes a wicked person if he doesn't send a messenger to the king on time. Because apprehension may kill that king. Are we together? So what this warlord does is when he has conquered or vanquished the enemy, he sends a messenger to the king. Not to go and tell the king, it's not that we are winning or that we will win or that we should win. What is the king waiting for? We have won. Are we still here? So this messenger goes to the king with an evidence that the battle has been won. So this is what the warlord, because go back to that scripture. I, want, I will close here. I will continue next Sunday because of time. I really want people. Are you saying you will so much learn in Tender Grace Christian Center that no situation will ever harass you again. That no condition will ever intimidate you again. Are we together? So what this warlord does is that after he has conquered their opposing king, they strip that king naked. And he holds the king. And the people don't forget that before this time, they've sent a message to the emperor that they have won. He says, go to, go give me, read the NKJV. He spoke about a fragrance. I will tell you what that means. Read it again. Stay with me, please. Am I boring you? I want to teach. That is what I'm doing. 2 Corinthians 2 14. Now thanks be to God. Now thanks be to God. Who always leads us. Who always leads us. God is the one Lord who always leads us. Yes. In triumph. In triumph. In Christ. In Christ. And through us. And through us. Diffuses the fragrance. That is the word I am looking for. Diffuses. So what the Roman citizens do when the king has announced that they've won the battle. So all over Rome, they will put incenses with fragrances. They will light them up. 
Because don't forget that when they go to battle, everybody is hiding. So when they begin to smell the fragrance, they know that they have won the battle. So they begin to come out of their hiding places. So what this warlord now does is that when the fragrance has filled the whole land of Rome, he now marched majestically with that vanquished naked king by his side. That process in Rome in those days is called triumphalism. What that simply means is that that king is openly demonstrating that they have finally vanquished and conquered their oppressor. And that is why Bible now told us in Colossians chapter 2, it says, who has, how did he say it, haven't defeated powers and principalities, he made an open show of them triumphing over them in it. So what that warlord is doing is now demonstrating what Jesus did at Calvary. Strip the oppressive war, oppressive king and then nakedness march him through the marketplace. Confirm it to you that till eternity that naked king can never trouble you again. Can I prophesy here anything that looks like the finger of oppression around your life around your family around your career it may be infirmity it may be affliction it may be bondage if your amen is loud we strip them naked we strip them naked we strip them naked we strip them naked shout that amen loud and clear don't forget the title is the joy of what you won't be defeated again. Amen. I say you won't be defeated again. Amen. So that is what that process or that procession is called triumph basis. So you are now marching with the oppressive king to show everybody that I have stripped him naked. I have uncovered him of all of his power. He's now impotent and is powerless. So what the king now tells the warlord to do take him to the marketplace in the presence of every Roman citizen and cut off his head. That is the final time that that king will ever be seen again. The Egyptian that have journeyed with you, the Pharaoh that will not allow you peace. If I be a man of God, with finality we cut off their head. I say we cut off their head. I said we cut off their head. So the beauty of it now is that instead, pastor, of people now setting up physical fragrances, we are now that fragrance. So every time you walk around people, they smell victory around you. Are we still here? When you walk around sickness, sickness smells victory. Infirmity smells victory. Why? Because it is no longer physical fragrance. You are now the symbolism of that fragrance because the battle has been won on your... Somebody rise up and shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! the foundation for next week and then we'll close in first john chapter 5 oh i'm enjoying myself in verse number 14 first john chapter verse 4 i beg your pardon not 14 verse 4 first john 5 4 whatsoever it didn't say whoever whatsoever include your business includes your marriage includes your dream includes your vision includes your plan includes your intention includes your aspiration includes your desire includes your expectation shout yes so he says because everything that you carry as pregnancy is born of god please take your seat ministers so whatsoever is born of god it is whosoever your career, your finances, your intentions, your as anything that is born of God. He says, overcome the world. The world there is not physical world, is the system 
and the culture of this world. It's enos. Are we together? That is the Greek word there. So, and this is the victory that overcome the systems of the world. So, when something rises against whatever you are born, faith rises as a dynamite and overcome whatever has been positioned to steal your victory. I prophesy somebody who came in faith this morning, everywhere doubt has spoken to your heart that victory is not guaranteed for you. I prophesy under God, may the dynamism of faith scatter them in the name of Jesus. I said scatter them in the name of Jesus. I said scatter them in the name of Jesus. Shout that amen loud and clear. If you read that scripture and learn the foundation, please sit down, gentlemen and women. In that 5, 1 John 5 4, it says, This is the victory. Not D H E, not T, not T H E S E. T T H I S. This is the victory. Look at it there. And this is the victory. So, meaning that your own personal victory. Are we together? Not the victory of Harry concerning you but not even the victory of your own wife but your own private personalized this victory that is yours this victory that i've given to you personally this victory that you have handled and handed personally it is yours this is the victory it now says it is the force of faith that allows it Do you know that faith is a force of is a shield? Amen. Sit down. Evil wrote to me has attested to that and convinced us that faith is a shield. Ephesians chapter 6. Thank you, Jesus. If you are still in service, shout hallelujah. Give to me verse number 16. Thank you, Jesus. He says above all above your prayer point above your fasting above your murmuring above your grumbling above your complaining above all of these things above your doubt above your concern beyond your fear above all Taking the shield of faith. So faith is a shield against the attack of the enemy. Even Goliath had a shield with which to protect himself. So faith can be a shield of protection. So that when fear sets in, you release that shield. When doubt comes, I'm going to teach you next week how faith, joy, and victory are connected and related. Give me John chapter 15 verse 11. Let me just run ahead of myself and let me indulge myself. John 15 11, he says, these things have I spoken unto you. <laughs> yeah, 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 That my joy may remain in you, and that your joy, the narrative has just changed. It changed from Jesus' joy to becoming your joy. Hey. <laughs> These things have I spoken to you. What are those things? The word that I speak. They are spirit and they are life. So these words that I have spoken to you, that is spirit and life, is what makes your joy to remain, is what makes his joy, his own joy to remain in you. And when his joy is in you, it transmuted, it translates. What is the word? Meta metastasize, not metamorphosize. Me, what, what does cancer? How does cancer? How does it replicate themselves? Meta, 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 
metastasize. Is that the correct pronunciation? Met oh. Metastatic. Okay. Anyway, what? Oh, okay. Met. Uh -huh. Like Metropolitan Police. Are we together? So what that joy does is joy, his own joy, now replicates in you, and it changes from being his joy to becoming your joy. Are we in service? But then it starts with these things. Still my scripture. Oh God, did it? Amen. These things have I spoken to you that my joy, this is Jesus speaking, but that is a way you internalize and personalizes Jesus' joy to becoming your own joy. I will teach you next week. Are we in service? And this joy is what keeps you in victory. Are we in service? Because if they say if Satan can't touch your joy, it can't affect your victory. Are we still here? And if Satan cannot reach the word of God in your heart, it can never steal the joy of Christ in your heart. Are we together? That is why Bible told us, in, let us go home. Let me, if I want to teach, I will leave you. Rise up. Let us. That's why Bible says, there are many voices in the world and every one of them are not without signification. So every time the word of God, the word, these things have I spoken to you, that your joy, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. So Satan now comes after that word and when Satan comes after that, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what happens there is that the joy that the word of God, the word Jesus, the joy of Jesus in you, diminishes and ability for you to convert it to your own joy becomes limited that is where fear anxiety doubt irrit irritation fear grumbling murmuring that is where they come in and then satan hangs around you and such people if they fight till eternity victory can never be theirs and that is why you should learn today that if there's anything you hand over, never hand over your joy because your victory is connected to your joy and your joy is associated with this word in your heart. Rise up on your feet. Let us go home. <laughs> Lift your voice and begin to talk to God. In the name of Jesus, nobody will suffer defeat here again. In tender grace Christian center, I say as a church, we will never be defeated again. Everything that our heart purposes to do, I see the joy, the victory, and the power of the word of God bringing them to pass in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to love on Jesus. Just go ahead and begin to appreciate the king of glory. Begin to appreciate him. Father, we thank you. Please, I beg you, whatever you do next Sunday, don't miss service. I will so much break it down to you that I will teach you how God himself anointed Satan. Satan is called the anointed one. The same title with Jesus. Only Satan, only Lucifer shares that title with Jesus. So you that are thinking Satan is not anointed, highly anointed. And if you give him room, <laughs> somebody shout, God punish you, Lucifer. Lift your voice and just talk to Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you for the coverage of your word. Thank you for bringing your word alive. These things have I spoken that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Father, establish the fullness of my joy through your own joy. Thank you, wonderful Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, jam those hands together one more time. God bless you. It's a very wonderful Sunday. Can somebody get my offering? Please quickly package your offering. Lift it up above your head and begin to give God the glory. Begin to give God the honor. Your offering for this month, I mean your tithe, your offering for this Sunday. Lift it up above your head and just go ahead and talk to Jesus. Father, as we give, we ask that.